Hey, what's up YouTube? Uh, first of all, I want to say thanks for clicking. Uh, thank you for watching my video. I appreciate that. Um, if you do like the content, feel free to um, like, subscribe, you know, leave a comment. If you have any questions about this build, you know, feel free to leave a comment and um, I'll give you whatever kind of information uh, that I can to help you out along the way. Uh, the reason that I'm making this video is because I haven't really seen a great tutorial that was on video about how to make a wood stove out of an old water heater. I'm sure there are some videos out there, but I didn't find one very easily or anything that was, you know, very detailed. So I'm going to be as thorough as I possibly can. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, let's get right into what's going on here. I already knocked the top off of this thing. That was pretty easily achieved with just a drift punch and a hammer. Um, there was this little collar and this piece here that threads on to the top for it to be vented. Um, so I already took that off and then just knocked the top right off. Um, I'm using an air chisel. That's something you could pick up pretty cheap at Harbor Freight. Or you could just use, um, you know, like a die grinder uh, with a cutting wheel to um, split this open with. But I figured the uh, air ratchet would be a little bit easier and it would kind of keep the dust down from this uh, insulation. It looks to be fiberglass, but I don't know, there could be some asbestos in there. I don't want to kick up too much dirt. So I will finish um, stripping the uh, sheet metal. It's not very pretty, but hey, you know, it works. Um, let's see what we can do about getting this outer case off. All right, here's a look at the uh, tank uh, with the insulation and the sheet metal all stripped off of it. Tremendous amount of insulation. In so this is pretty great actually it already has the stand on it I'm gonna leave it just like that and um, build an, an upright um, stove out of it just like that um, of course you could lay it down but then you would have to uh, add legs and do a bunch of other uh, more work to it so I think it'll be pretty good just like this and then also with it being that tall that should uh, with some baffles on the top that should really promote a good secondary burn and uh, make a pretty efficient stove. So we just got to mark out a whole template. Out of cardboard, all you need is your uh, tape measure, pencil, and a razor blade. Okay. And then realistically, I want the door to be about 12 inches wide, but there's a little bit of a radius there. So I'm going to add a couple inches. We'll go uh, 14 inches. Okay, a little bit more. All right, perfect. There's the uh, template for the door. We'll just uh, lay that down on there and trace it out. Okay, so there's the uh, template for the door. Just put it on there and trace around it. And the uh, next thing we're gonna do is cut it out. We'll use a plasma cutter for that.
right, so the door is cut out. And uh, let's see what we got in here. Looks like uh, a lot of rust, a lot of crap, but still seems, I don't know, seems to still be pretty thick. It's not rusted out all the way through or anything. So I think that'll be alright. Okay, so here's a look at the uh, inside of it. Um, Definitely a lot of shit in here. Lots of rust and stuff. But um, this is galvanized, so keep that in mind when you're cutting on this material that it is galvanized. And then, of course, this is going to have to have a couple pretty hot burns outside um, to kind of get rid of the toxic fumes that are going to um, get burned off um, from the galvanizing. So, but... Overall, it looks pretty good. I mean, if you look at the edge of the material, um, that's good. It's There's a lot of rust in here, but the tank itself really isn't damaged. And I'm thinking that for the door, we'll put some uh, flat bar just around the edge of this door and let it hang over. I figured out what I was going to do to achieve that radius on the flat bar. Um, I found an old steel rim that was laying around in the back. And um, that's actually exactly the same. Um, the outside diameter of this rim is exactly the same as our um, stove door. So, when we stand this up, I'm going to use... Um, the narrowest part of this wheel right here to uh, bend the flat bar to get that radius um, because of when you bend something like that you have to actually bend it a little bit more than you need and um, it'll spring back a little bit and we can always bend it back more if we need to and that'll be perfect um, I'll get a piece of flat bar cut off here and I'll show you how that works Okay, so I have a propane heater going, um, trying to dry out the inside of that tank so I can get most of the rust out. So um, hopefully you guys can still hear me okay. Um, here's what I, what we came up with uh, for the wheel. Just got that clamped on there, and um, just gonna bend it by hand. Okay, so that was easy enough. Just uh, bent that over by hand. Um, let's see how it fits on the door. Okay, so that's um, right on, that's perfect. It's a little bit over, but I can push it down by hand. So I'll be able to just clamp that straight on there and uh, weld it up. I did leave about eight inches extra to be able to um, work with. Alright, so there's our two pieces uh, bent to the radius that we need. Um, these marks right here where the X is. This line is where the edge of the door was. And um, I added an inch and a quarter uh, for the width of the material because it's going to be hanging over um, half of the width of the material on each side. So I just added the total width of the flat bar so that we would have equal amount on both sides. And then I just drew a little X on that line and on that one over there. Um, that way I know, don't cut that one, just cut the one that has a line on it. It's just a good way to keep track of what's going on um, so you don't cut the wrong thing.
Okay, so here's the door. Um, it's pretty much done. The door itself, anyways. I uh, still need to build some hinges and um, build a latch for it. But um, it's pretty much done. I skipped showing you guys a lot of stuff. Just partly because it was difficult to um, film uh, while I was welding. And uh, I'm using my phone to record this. So I don't, you know, I don't want to get my phone in there and get it all messed up. But um, I did grind off the uh, galvanizing around the edges to weld that on. Um, those pieces with the radius, we already covered that. Uh, the straight pieces were pretty straightforward, you know, just cut them to length, uh, weld them on. And um, let me show you the other side. Hey, there it is. It's got a nice, uh, nice lip there. So that should create a pretty good seal. Alright, so that little piece that I showed you that I was um, deburring on the wire wheel is one of four. Uh, these are about two inches each. And then this piece here is about eight inches. So that's that's going to be the hinge. Um, let me mock this up real quick and I'll show you. Whoopsie! Okay, there we go. So the bottom one, this one right here, will be welded to the um, tank, to the stove. And then the next one will be welded to the door. The third one will be welded to the tank as well. And then the last one 